An investigation is underway in southern Kentucky after fire ripped through a pallet company. So it's just a stark reminder for me personally uh, of what can happen, of, of how much responsibility this job entails. It's a way to honor law enforcement who died in the line of duty. This afternoon, a small Kentucky community honors an officer whose death remains unsolved. How one woman was lured into buying worthless stones and what you can learn from her experience coming up. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 530. Good evening to you. The investigation continues today into a fire at a pallet company in southern Kentucky. The fire broke out at J&J &J Pallet on Highway 70 near the Lincoln and Pulaski County lines about 6 o'clock last night. WKYT's Phil Pendleton is talking to firefighters who are now looking at arson as a possible cause. He has our top story at 530. J&J &J Pallet Company takes old pallets and turns them into new ones. I love the work here. So you can imagine the worry when the 10 employees like Jose Santos Alfaro saw much of his bread and butter literally go up in flames. Everybody, I need money, you know, and I need a job. The pallet company ships products all over the southeastern United States. It's a place to work. We can, nobody was hurt and we can, we can make more pallets. Yet the question remains, was this an accident? We had a general idea that uh, it started somewhere around one of these trailers. You don't want to leave your house at night. Three years ago, firefighters were extremely busy putting out similar fires at similar places all over Eubank. All were intentionally set, but no one was ever arrested. On Wednesday, workers like Jose and his boss were counting their blessings while the investigators search for clues. He needs his job as bad as I need mine. You know, and just to be able to come here and keep working is, you know, it's the good thing about it. About the only good thing in months of hard work reduced to rubble in minutes. In Lincoln County, Phil Pendleton, WKYT. The Lincoln County Fire Chief says 75 firefighters from three counties all helped battle that fire. Deputies in southern Kentucky are trying to track down a man they say has been missing for nearly a month. Our county by county coverage begins in Laurel County. The Laurel County Sheriff's Office has issued a golden alert for 69 year old Earl Turley. Deputies say he hasn't been home since April 15th, but his wife didn't report him missing until last night. His wife says he suffers from bipolar disorder. She also says he has taken off in the past, but always turns up within a week or two. Yes, I'm very much worried about him because, like I say, usually I'll get a call from the police or from some medical facility. Turley says her husband normally goes south when he takes off. She says she received a phone call last night suggesting he might be heading west this time. In Wolf County, a man wounded by state police after a shootout was in court today for a preliminary hearing. 39-year-old Matthew Preston is charged with two counts of attempted murder of a police officer. State police say Preston fired shots at troopers last week during an investigation in the Pine Ridge community. Troopers returned fire hitting Preston. Preston's family says he had been suffering from some mental health issues but wasn't able to get help because he didn't have any insurance. And in Mason County, deputies arrested two men after finding drugs inside their home. Deputies went to a home on Tangletown Road in Germantown for a welfare check but smelled marijuana when they arrived to the house. They also found several items including marijuana, pills, a handgun and an AK-47 assault rifle. Deputies arrested Roy Insco. He's charged with trafficking marijuana. They also arrested Brian Hay for tampering with physical evidence. It is finally starting to feel like spring. We got off to a cool start this morning, and it's another day of sunny skies and cool temperatures. Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey is tracking it all from the First Alert Weather Center. Chris? Yes, yeah, Sam, those thermometers today even cooler than what we had 24 hours ago. But the good news about it all, we're keeping the sunshine that we had 24 hours ago. Those numbers right now running anywhere from a degree or so up to five and six degrees colder than at this same point yesterday across central and eastern Kentucky. Actual thermometers, a lot of upper 60s are showing up. How about Mount Sterling at only 66 degrees? We're the cool spot throughout the entire region. 67 Covington, 68 right now.
now to Danville and Richmond, still hugging 70 degrees into parts of southeastern Kentucky. Life first alert defender, not a whole lot going on. Hard to get any precipitation, obviously, if you can't get very much in the way of some clouds. Maybe a couple of ice crystal clouds beginning to show up across the region, but our live sky cams now, Frankfort, Georgetown, Lexington, and into northern parts of Madison County. All showing a similar view out there with a partly sunny sky. Here's our sky cam out back of the station on Winchester Road. Some of those ice crystal clouds getting in on the western horizon should be another gorgeous sunset that is showing up. I'll say that one three times. Weather headlines as we roll toward the weekend. Steamy air begins to increase. Storm chances. We'll do the uh, same thing as well. But guys, as soon as we start to steam it up and storm it up, another cold front arrives on the scene. I'll tell you when that gets into town with the seven day forecast in just a few minutes. Thank you, Chris. Rescue crews in Wolf County had to help a group of lost hikers last night. The search started around 5:30 after three people called police to say they could not find their way out of the woods. Police say the hikers lost cell phone service. Rescue crews tell us they had a tough time tracking them down because the hikers kept moving after they called 911. The general advice when you get lost is to stay put because there is technology like cell phone triangula triangulation and even aerial surveillance these days that can help us spot people pretty quickly. If you're moving along a trail system, that makes our job that much harder. So stay put. Search and rescue crews suggest having maps and preparing an equipment bag before hiking. This week is National Police Week. It is a week set aside to honor those in law enforcement who died in the line of duty. Today, Kentucky State Police paid tribute to Trooper Johnny Edrington, who died during a routine traffic stop. And as Miranda Combs tells us, after more than 20 years, police and Edrington's family are still searching for answers. It's a story that's new at 5:30. Campbellsville is proud to call Kentucky State Trooper Johnny Edrington one of their own. This was home to the 34 year old. But since 1988, this has been home Brookside Cemetery. Edrington's family, his brothers and sisters in gray, have had a memorial service at this site for the past 26 years. His daughter, Callie, never met her father. She was born right after he died. The family doesn't ask us to do it. Uh, it's just part of what we do to remember and to, quite frankly, keep it real and to remind us uh, every day, every year, that there is a reality that when we leave, we may not return home. Trooper Edrington didn't come home that night in December of 88. He was shot during a traffic stop in London. I'm Trooper Billy Gregory has attended this service for the last 19 years. So it's just a stark reminder to me personally uh, of what can happen, of, of how much responsibility this job entails. To this date, no one knows who shot Edrington. They are incredibly patient. Uh, with this process, uh, they know and understand that, that we are investigating, that we are looking at it, that we have never stopped. Callie is survived, in her 20s water. now. She's going to be married in the fall. Edrington's dog. wife, Diane, has remarried. Life goes on, but the memorial will never stop. That we have not forgotten, that we will never forget. It. In Campbellsville, Miranda Combs, WKYT. Trooper Edrington's story has received national attention and even aired on America's Most Wanted. The pitch was pretty simple. You can make a fortune off of buying undervalued gems. But the 100 people who invested discovered something else. They had been conned. We decided to buy one and see what happened. Millie Duke bought one gem after receiving a call about investing in precious stones. They were very high pressure. She would call every week or two trying to get us to go higher and higher and trade one in for another that was much more expensive. Millie and her husband thought it was risk proof because the company told investors they could sell the stone back to them for almost triple the original amount. So people were um, led to believe that not only were they buying something that was undervalued to begin with, but that it was going to appreciate, you know, uh, very quickly. Millie bought one emerald for almost $5,000 and was told it would be worth $20,000 in just a few months. They were generally, you know, worthless. An item that was purportedly worth 
uh, $5,800 at the time of purchase was found to be worthless um, and was considered by the laboratory in New York to be essentially a green rock. Investors were warned not to break the seal on the packaging of the stones and that if they did, the buyback offer would be null and void. Victims were, were really afraid to open these containers and have these items checked for themselves for fear that they wouldn't be able to sell them through the, uh, the company at a later date. And, of course, without opening the box, they had no way to assess the value of the stones they had just purchased. When Millie decided to cash out, she called the company, but no one answered. If they had taken us for that amount, they had more than likely taken others for probably more. In fact, more than 100 victims invested a total of $4 million. Millie went online and found several complaints on scamvictimsunited.com. She also learned that some of those victims lost a lot of money. Many people had given their life savings. They had been out house losing money, uh, retirement money, 15000 and more. Postal inspectors have some simple advice for consumers. Never purchase expensive items like gems over the phone without being able to look them over. Once someone tells you that you can't uh, really examine something that you're buying, you have to run the other way. That's a fraud. This story has a bit of a happy ending of sorts. A suspect was taken into custody and he paid restitution, giving victims most of their money back. And that rarely happens. It is the first of its kind in Kentucky. Students can get a bachelor's degree in game design. Today, Eastern Kentucky University hosted a regional video game exhibition. Students in the program presented the three games they spent the semester developing. The department says it's a way to encourage students to get involved in the major. Beyond the networking that they just learned, that they learned that the most important thing is to show off the games, let people play their games. And, and grow from that and learn more because they're always, they, they should be always working on the next game. So the next game they can improve. About 30 some students presented their games this afternoon.